as we take a look, uh, continue to take a look as we're drawing to the very end of the Gospel of John in chapter 21. I, I wonder uh, how many of you are pretty sure in your life about most things that you're right, that you are correct, that you know the answer. And I wonder how many of you find it deeply irritating when someone else thinks they're right and their answer is different than yours. Uh, I'm sure that's none of you. I'm sure that's none of you. But I want to make a confession this morning because I'm understanding that confession is good for the soul. And that is, when I'm certain I'm right, I sometimes have little patience for those people who are convinced they're right and their rightness is different than my rightness. I expect to be right. Uh, case in point, this week I went grocery shopping on Friday because it needed to be done. Uh, and so I put on my mask, I drove over to uh, Trader Joe's, and I waited in the line that, uh, you know, stretched for like 75 miles uh, to get in. All of us in our masks. Uh, waiting in line, six feet apart, mind you, six feet apart. Now, unlike Costco, which has line police, uh, that no one came down to tell us not to stand six feet apart from each other. We all knew because there were lines all the way down. I was down past, I went, it doesn't matter which one I went to. I was just far away. I could not even see Trader Joe's from where I was. So as I'm making my way forward in the line, uh, a person who was in Moe's getting lunch comes out, no mask on, and says, you know, this is all just pretend. This isn't even real. This pandemic is pretend. And, you know, uh, you know, go to this blah, blah, blah website, which will tell you exactly how this is all pretend, blah, 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 blah. And I just want to tell you that I'm pretty sure there's a pandemic. I'm just pretty sure. I am pretty sure I'm right. I think I'm pretty sure I'm right. So my response inside started to well up inside. And I had some, uh, I've learned some new responses recently listening to my son play uh, video games at home. You know, some things that he calls out at his screen. And I was thinking I, I had some good things. And then I thought to myself, I don't need to say anything. It's just going to start an argument. It doesn't matter whether I'm right and or he's right, or somewhere in between, or anything else. All that it matters is that I be reflective of God's love. And so for me, I'm just going to be silent. He's sure he's right. I'm pretty sure I'm right. And so I don't want to make a whole lot of room for him. Now, I'd love to tell you that it was just so easy for me that years of centering prayer and letting go has just led me to a place where I let go things easily. If I told you that, I would be lying to you, and it goes against my principles. So I'd like to share with you a bit of a story. You might think, what does this have to do with the tail end of Gospel of John 20, you know, verse, you know, verses 15 through 19 in chapter 21? Well, I'm hoping I'll build a bridge, that it wasn't just chasing a squirrel to tell you and confess to you my transgressions in the line of Trader Joe's. This is the word, remember last week, big breakfast on the beach, 151 fish, great big fish story, you know, uh, right there. And now we're picking up verse 15. When they had finished breakfast, it probably took a while, 151 fish, that's a lot of eating. Uh, you know, you have to be pretty hungry, I guess. Maybe they didn't eat them all, I don't know. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my, feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And Peter said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. 
Very truly, I tell you, you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to him, follow me, follow me. This is the gospel of our Lord for this morning. Thanks be to God. You know, I have to tell you, I was convinced for a long time I was right about this story, that it was a rebuke of Peter, that it was uh, a calling out of Peter uh, for his three times denying Jesus before the, uh, the sun rose on the day Jesus was crucified. I was convinced. I was convinced. I'm now convinced I was wrong. So there you go, that it was not a calling out. Jesus hasn't called anybody out thus far. He didn't condemn anybody who went back to fishing last week. Remember last week they went back to fishing? Like, you know, kind of aimlessly uncertain about what to do next with their lives. Jesus didn't call them out then. Jesus just fixed them a wicked huge breakfast and helped them catch a whole bunch of extra fish, 153. Uh, And now... After breakfast, after they've been filled with the abundance of God, once again, this abundance that God reaches out to them with, uh, Jesus pulls aside Peter and says to him, Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? The first question is, do you love me more than these? Now you might say, more than these what? (laughs) These other disciples. Because... If you remember, in Matthew and Mark and the story of the Last Supper, and Jesus says, you're all going to abandon and deny and betray me, essentially, before dawn tomorrow, Peter says, I'm better than the rest of these guys. I will never abandon you. I will go all the way to death and jail with you. And so... It was just kind of a reminder. Remember when you said you loved me more than those others? Do you love me more than these? Well, chances are pretty good Peter knew at that point, no, he didn't love Jesus more than these. But that he did love Jesus. That he did love Jesus. And then, so he says, yes, you know I love you. Feed my lambs. Again, he asked, do you love me? Tend my sheep. All about taking care of the sheep. All about loving. Do you love me? If you love me, then love the sheep that I've called you to tend. If you love me, this is what discipleship is all about. It's not about numbers. It's not about all the other kinds of things that you may have been taught that ministry in the world was all about. It's about loving each other. You know, we've said it over and over again. You might get tired of me saying that. You know, I, I, I've been meditating. I still meditate every single day on 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter that Paul uh, is credited with writing. You know, uh, all about what love looks like. And most of you have heard that in weddings. But it's really about what life is supposed to be about. If you don't have love... You don't have anything. You don't have anything without love. And Peter needed to be reminded that this was all about, ten. if you want to be a disciple, if you want to be a disciple, that's well and good. That's well and good. It's really nice. But if you really love me, don't just love me. Don't just bow down and worship me. Love your sisters and brothers. Love your sisters and brothers. You know, throughout the Old Testament, one of the things that we miss out on so often is they all want to keep offering. The prophets come along and say, you want to keep offering these nice offerings to me. I don't want your offerings. I want you to take care of your sisters and brothers. That's what I want. If you can't do that, coming down to the temple and making a nice offering doesn't do me a bit of good. And it doesn't do you a bit of good either. (laughs) Unless you learn to love each other. Unless you learn to love each other, 
You can't love me if you don't love each other. You can't love Jesus if you can't love the people that you can see. The people that irritate the living crud out of you, the ones that come out of Moe's without a mask on and say ugly things about what you believe to be true. Unless you can hear them with the same amount of love as the people who pat you on the back and agree with you. Of course, they don't pat you on the back. They stand six feet away with their mask on. Because they've got it right. In the end, I think we've made religion way too much. And I'm talking about religion. Christian religion. Way too much about being right. And way too little about loving God and loving your neighbor. And recognizing that you can't love God if you don't love your neighbor. That's what it's all about. That's how it measures from top to bottom, stem to stern. Everywhere you go, it's all about love. You know, back in the late 90s, I still remember when they came out with that fad where we all had little WWJD bracelets, what would Jesus do? Not a single one of us has an idea. <laughs> Not a single one. of Because what, we would, what, we, what I found most of the answers were, Jesus would do what I do, what I would do. Jesus would do exactly what I would put my own stuff on. Jesus would do exactly what I do. He'd wear a mask because he knows I'm right. Or he'd do whatever it was because he knows I'm right. Jesus, he knows me and he knows I'm right. I've been talking to Jesus all my life. Little Genesis for you there, Phil Collins. The truth of the, uh, uh, the, truth of the matter is, Jesus, in these four verses, sums up the whole gospel message for us. Discipleship is love. Love that's hard, love that's easy, love that's challenging. And what would Jesus do? He would love. And guess what? In the Gospel of John, he even does a little thing because some people I know have taken this passage and said, well, of course. Jesus wants Peter to tend the sheep. And who are the sheep? Christians. Jesus has already told us in the Gospel of John, he has sheep that aren't even of this, past, of, of this fold. We don't know who the sheep are that Jesus wants us to tend. <laughs> you have no idea if every person you meet isn't one of the sheep that God wants you to tend. So you better err on the side of uh, generosity in your determining who a sheep is. <laughs> I don't want to come up measuring us short. That dude without a mask is one of the sheep. I'm convinced. And it was one of those moments. God didn't send it along to test me. God doesn't need to test me. Life tests me. And God walks with me while there's a test. And I would love to say that I passed with flying colors. I got an A+. It was more like a C-. minus. <laughs> It was a pass-fail course, and I barely passed by the skin of my teeth when I let it go. By remembering, God loves... I had some things to say. Some things I wanted to say that I knew would just... I didn't say them. I did not say them out loud, and I let them go inside my mind. Yes, I know if we want to... We won't go there. The long and short is... The whole measure of discipleship for you and for me. Not just for people. You know, I've also heard it said, tend my sheep is about the shepherds. And you know, I'm a pastor and I'm a shepherd. That's part of my pastoral call is being shepherdy. So being shepherdy means, hey, I'm the one that's meant to love all and tend to the sheep. The rest of you can just watch me do it and be thankful. I'm sorry, there is no, uh, there's no break for you if you are an unpaid servant of God. <laughs> if you want to follow me, because that's the last word to Peter, follow me. If you want to follow Jesus and follow in Jesus' way, then you've got to love all the sheep. There was a book I read in the 80s. I don't remember a word it said. I don't think it was particularly inspiring to me. I'm really sorry, I can't remember the author, but the title of the book was They Smell Like Sheep. Have you ever smelled sheep? <laughs> Man. The bottom line is we're all sheep. 
And sometimes we all stink. And sometimes it's really hard to love us. But our call is to do it no matter what. You see, when Jesus looked at Peter, he knew Peter felt like he needed redemption. I don't think Jesus felt like he needed redemption. But Peter felt like he needed redemption. And so Jesus met him where he was. How many times did he deny Jesus before the, co- before the rooster crowed in the morning? Three times. So how many times did he ask Peter? Three times. The third time it even hurt Peter's feelings. Much as the third time when he realized as the rooster was crowing that he had denied Jesus, it broke his heart. This third time broke his heart too. Only now he knew that three for three in his own mind was enough. And that all Jesus wanted, all Jesus wanted, was to tend, feed, and love the sheep. If you want to really love Jesus, you have to love the sheep. And you don't get to pick which ones are the sheep you love. You got to love all the sheep. That's how they'll know we are really followers of Jesus or not. There's a wonderful song. They'll know we're Christians by our love. They'll know we're not Christians by our lack of it. Now, I won't make those decisions for you, but that's what this passage says. There's no mince in words. If you love Jesus, love your sheep. And that's all of Jesus' sheep. And you don't get to choose who they are. So do the hard work of the gospel this week. Do the hard work of the good news, which is to love your, love your neighbor, to love the sheep, all the sheep, all of God's sheep, 